Welcome back, riders. This is the F7 GB2, a drone from a company called Beewine. They sent this to me so I could tell you guys what I think about it. As an individual who focuses mostly on two-wheeled vehicles and accessories, I'm certainly no drone expert, but I have been known to dabble. As a select few of you may remember, this channel actually started out as a drone channel, so I'm not lost in the sauce when it comes to enthusiast level equipment. And I still occasionally use them in my videos for b-roll or just cinematic footage. Needless to say, I do not require perfection when it comes to my video and audio equipment, but I do need acceptable results. Normally, I'll do a bit of research on a product before accepting it to make a video. However, knowing about what a decent drone should cost, I just naturally assumed coming in at $450 on Amazon or $530 on their own website, that's a wild price difference for some reason, I just assumed the quality would be acceptable. Especially when DJI, a reputable and well-known company, has their Mini 2 in a price bracket well below this one. Well guys, if you think you've ever seen the creativity of the comment section on YouTube, I think I may have just encountered my first instance of being trolled by an actual company. Whereas it is true, there are some really nice things about this drone. I have no idea how they expect me to work with this. This is not a Hollywood action thriller where I can just magically say enhance and make the video quality good. This is what comes out of the camera and this is what you have to work with. Just to be clear, this is the quality of footage you get from the SD card on the drone's camera. And here is the quality from the phone's recording point of view. The phone itself is mostly just for redundancy so the quality of that footage doesn't matter as much there's not a big difference between the two. They claim the camera on the drone is 4K. I guarantee you it's not. It's been scaled up from something else. I suspect 720p, but at best 1080p. Resolution by itself doesn't tell the whole story. For example, my 360 camera outputs a 1080p video, and that looks pretty nice. So 1080p cameras can still do just fine for content creation. This one, however, doesn't. Adding insult to injury, this only records at 20 frames per second. A bare minimum of usable frames per second would be 24, ideally 30. This low frame rate cap makes filming moving objects or fast motions of the drone look very jarring and unpleasant. The color saturation is unpredictable and of poor quality. It'll either wash out your scene or blow the colors up way too much. The camera's exposure adjust in very noticeable steps, is slow to react, and never quite adjust to the scene properly. 
It doesn't take a photography expert to tell you this is of pretty useless quality. I'm sure anybody looking at it can judge for themselves. But there might be one instance where this camera could come in handy. The dynamic range is pretty good. You can see quite well in the shadows below the trees. So for surveilling property or just exploring your surroundings, it's acceptable. But useless for content creators. This is about the quality I would expect from the earliest days of smartphone cameras, and I suspect they might be using some surplus equipment in this drone. And where I can appreciate the reuse of old technology so it doesn't go to waste, this is simply not the right place for it. So this review is not off to a great start, and it's always difficult to bash someone's product that they sent to me for free, but honesty is the only good review. There's a well-known saying, garbage in, garbage out. If you give me a pile of garbage, the best I can do is put it in a nice little bag for you. However, if you send me a hidden gem, I'll make you a diamond ring. Another side of the same coin when it comes to video footage is stability. Whether you decide to electronically stabilize your footage or physically stabilize it with a gimbal. This drone uses a gimbal, which most of the time actually works just fine. However, I noticed when panning the drone left or right, it will not always recenter, staying on the edge of its travel and causing the footage to look jerky. However, this only happens occasionally. Most of the time, the gimbal on this drone works fine. So, in my experience about aerial photography, there are three very important aspects which will make or break its usability. And having already thrown video quality out the window, let's take a look at the other two. Our next category covers performance, stability, and reliability. Here the drone actually shines pretty well. Its build quality is decent, it doesn't feel of premium plastic, but they do have to keep it as light as possible and it doesn't feel cheap. I especially love the carrying case they give you with this set. I managed to drop it off the back of my motorcycle at about 30 miles an hour and nothing inside was damaged, so thumbs up for that. I mean, a carrying case being of good quality is nice, but you know, the drone's still gotta do its job. They're using some unbranded brushless motors, but they run smooth and have no bearing noise. The props feel super tough. I'm sure these can whack a couple branches without breaking, and they seem plenty efficient. I didn't get anywhere near their estimated run times, but I was able to happily fly for 12 minutes, which for me is more than enough to capture the footage I need to get. The kit comes with two batteries, which are rechargeable via USB-C. I really like that feature, as I don't care much for proprietary chargers. It will, however, take about six hours to charge one of these batteries, so make sure you've got your shot lined up and figured out before you put the drone in the air, because you're going to need to make the most of that flight time. It's operating off of a three-cell lithium polymer system, so that's about 12 volts, which means this is certainly no performance drone. However, its tune is really nice. Stability in the wind is very good. It is precise at holding its location and barely moves, even when the trees are kicking. Its altitude hold is also precise, staying right where you put it in the sky. The drone does feel well connected to the controller. When flying line of sight in close proximity, its response is instant and precise. However, over longer ranges where you have to fly through the footage on your phone, it is laggy and sluggish. Top speed on the drone is only about 20 miles an hour, which means it's not great at keeping up with vehicles. However, the follow me feature, which is pretty nice, is good when you're just walking or cruising on a bike. There is no obstacle avoidance or proximity sensors anywhere on this thing, so make sure you give it a clear path if you do decide to use the follow me feature. Video link and radio connection from the controller to the drone also feels solid. I didn't push it to see how far it would go, but beyond line of sight is certainly doable. I never found any situations where the connection felt spotty or the video got unusable. I could always tell where the drone was and move it around without issues. For reliability, I'll give it to him on this one. It's a win. Takeoffs are instant and painless, holding its position a few meters off the ground until you take the controls. Its landings are very soft with little to no bounce upon touching the ground. And its return to home function has worked every time I've tried it, always bringing it back within a few feet of where it took off. 
I do have to point out that its descents are very slow. Lowering the elevation in automatic via return to home or manually by just pushing the throttle to its lowest position, this thing seems to only drop three or four feet per second, which can be really slow when it's way up there. There were some times when the battery was low I was trying to land and the thing is just coming down like a snail. I do find this particularly odd because this drone's ability to climb elevation is rather quick. There's no issues getting it up, it's getting it down which can take a while. Our next category covers user interface and ease of use. How much of a headache is it to use the drone and how many steps do you have to take in between deciding to take the shot and actually getting it? Whereas this category is certainly not as important as a reliable, stable platform with good video quality, knowing that you don't have to go through a bunch of hassle from the time you decide to take the shot to actually getting it will go a long way in letting you actually get more shots. After the initial setup and your first test flight, the steps you'll take to fly this drone every time are as follows. You'll decide where you're going to fly to get your shot. You'll remove the drone from the bag as well as the controller. Unfold the drone's arms, unfold the controller, turn on the app with your phone, turn on the drone, turn on the controller. The connections are all automatic, so that's pretty much it. However, there's one additional step which I don't think is on most newer modern drones. You have to calibrate the compass. This is quick and easy, it's just one step I would like to avoid every single time I have to fly. You have to hold the drone up in the air, about a meter, and spin it around in two circles. This only takes about 10 seconds, but doing it every single time you fly is a bit annoying. Their user interface is probably where they did the best job on this setup. I have very few complaints with this. For being a compact fold-out controller, this actually feels pretty good in the hands and I have no issues holding it for the entire duration of the flight. The gimbals actually feel of really good quality too. They don't feel cheap plasticky and they're precise enough to control the drone in tight situations. The only complaint I have on the controller, which might be a tuning issue, is the zoom feature is absolutely useless. Who would want to zoom in on this already poor quality? It's, it's digital, not optical. And the gimbal control. The only controls you have for the gimbal, which are really the only ones you need, is to tilt the camera up and down. This does work just fine, however it has very little resolution, so you can't slowly tilt the camera down for a dynamic shot. It does it in steps, so you end up just kind of tapping it into position, there's no fluid motion here, so I'd like to see an improvement on that. Their app was pretty well done. It's clean, simple, and stable. Even on my old 2018 phone, I have no issues turning on the app and instantly connecting it to the drone. It's in fact so intuitive that when I want to take off automatically, I just tap on my phone's takeoff feature and let that do the job instead of trying to use the controller, which I don't have a complaint with. It's just they did a good job on the app. They've also done a good job with all the automatic connections. When you turn on the drone, the controller, and your app, it all connects automatically and rather quickly. By the time I've calibrated the compass, everything's ready to go and I can take off right away. After you've connected to the drone for the first time in the app, it will always connect to it automatically when you turn it on, unless you're already connected to a Wi-Fi signal, like at your house. But for instance, when I'm out in the woods and there's no Wi-Fi around, the moment I turn on the drone, my phone will automatically connect to its Wi-Fi. Something I admittedly have never been able to get to work reliably on any of my DIY drones is the GPS follow me feature, which this one has. It's a lot of fun and would be useful if the camera had decent quality, but as it is right now, this feature is kind of just wasted on a drone with a crappy camera. It doesn't adjust the tilt of the gimbal, so you need to line up your shot before activating the follow me. And although the drone itself is reliable at following you, you still need to have a good GPS signal on your phone as well as the drone, so you can't always activate it. This isn't really a fault of the drone itself, it just depends on how accurate your phone is with GPS. To sum up my review of the F7 GB2, at this price point, the build quality is acceptable. Nothing special, but I didn't find it to feel cheap. The drone's precision, performance, and reliability is spot on. No issues with this thing just randomly dropping out of the sky or forgetting where it is. And it always returned to home within a few feet, so I like that. There needs to be a way to increase its descent speed, as it is it's way too slow at lowering altitude, and they need to retune the gimbal settings so it doesn't stay at its maximum yaw position when panning the drone left or right. 
Uh, then of course, the elephant in the room, video quality on this drone is pretty much useless for any situation I can think of other than surveying property. And even then, the DJI Mini is cheaper with a much, much better camera. As a DIY enthusiast, I'll be removing this camera and putting one of my own on it. This is going to be a bit of an involved process, and I can't even recommend this drone to DIY pilots because, you know, at that point, just build your own. So at the end of the day, unless they upgrade this immediately with a much better camera, I can't say it's worth the price. Not even close. So I don't justify this as a purchase for any situation. Anyways, I hope you guys got some useful information out of today's video, or at the very least, were mildly entertained.